Well, it's finally happened. I've been dragged kicking and screaming into the 21st century. I'm now on the new digital mode FT8. And I love it. This is a really interesting uh, weak signal mode. It's for weak signal propagation. And uh, it's amazing with uh, just a few watts of power, you can actually be heard all the way around the world given the right um, propagation conditions. This package has been developed by Joe Taylor, K1JT, and his friends. And it's been out about uh, a little over 12 months now. So it has about, oh, I guess, uh, seven or eight different modes in there in the actual application. I haven't done much digital work uh, in amateur radio in the past, but I was interested in the weak signal propagation and the weak signal modes that have come out uh, of recent years, and in particular, this one here, FT8. So this video is not going to go into the depths. It's not a tutorial about how to do FT8. Uh, you will find that there is already heaps of stuff out there on the internet and uh, on YouTube as to how to get involved with uh, weak signal propagation modes and specifically FT8. Um, so I'm not going to cover all of that. This is more of a report just to let you know what I'm doing in my uh, Radio Shack right at the moment over the last couple of months. So my setup for receiving and transmitting FT8 is the MacBook Pro laptop computer. Um, this is a spec'd up one. It goes back to about 2015, I think, is the model. That's connected to my Yaesu FTDX3000. And the FTDX3000 has a sound card already in it. It has a few um, of the more modern uh, uh, transceivers do these days. So I don't need to go through uh, an interface between the radio and the computer. For some setups, they have to do that, um, such as a signal link or something, something like that, uh, or even a homemade uh, interface is required to get the computer and the uh, transceiver talking to each other. But that's all contained in the uh, FTDX3000, which is actually one of the reasons why I bought this machine um, a few years ago. Uh, getting it all set up, though, uh, so that it, you've got the computer talking to the transceiver and vice versa, it can be a little bit tricky. And I spent the, probably the first uh, two nights fiddling around with it, uh, trying to get uh, the thing to work. Uh, and reading up on the internet about how to do it and uh, what other people had done on YouTube videos and so on. And it, it actually took a while um, because you find that uh, each brand of transceiver has a different menu system and, and so some variations in the way the digital modes are picked up and so on and how you program all that into the transceivers. Um, and even between the models uh, of a particular brand, there can be some uh, differences in the layout. So you really got to know what you're doing. And I didn't really know enough about it uh, to be able to, to be able to hook it up really straight away. So it took quite a bit of fiddling to do, but it was an interesting learning process as much as anything else. Uh, and then you've got to get into the, uh, uh, the application itself and uh, set that up so that that's talking to the um, to the transceiver. So it, there's a, there is quite a bit of uh, fiddling around to do, and uh, the depending on what sort of transceiver you use is going to depend on how you set up your um, uh, preferences in the application there. So it's all a bit uh, tricky to do, and it doesn't seem to matter f whether it's a, a Windows system or a an Apple Macintosh system or something like that, or a Linux, it, it does, uh, from what I've read from other people, have often had uh, a lot of problems getting it all set up. And sometimes it'll get set up and it'll work, and sometimes it'll stop working for some reason, you know. One of the problems that I had related to the USB ports that uh, are on the laptop, and uh, everything set up initially quite well, and then for some reason... Uh, one of the USB ports uh, refused to actually work when it was using the program uh, in order to control the transceiver. 
uh, and so we lost communication between the two and so after much fiddling around I connected it to the other USB port and that worked fine for quite a while and then, and then that one um, uh, started playing up as well. Okay, so you're now looking over my shoulder here at the, at the monitor and I'll apologise in advance if it's not too clear here. I'm not quite sure how this is going to show up on the video. This is the WSJT program and uh, it consists of two parts. There's the waterfall up the top. Every signal is being heard in that uh, spectrum exactly at the same time so there's a lot of processing power going on here in order to be able to make that happen the second window is the uh, information window here the left side are uh, the decoded signals of all the signals that appear on the uh, waterfall above and on the right side are the uh, uh, signals where the uh, receive uh, indicator land uh, or where I'm making a contact and I'll I'll because uh, I haven't made any contacts here for a while now so this no, there's no contacts showing up there that I've made I'll just put up a screenshot of that now that gives you an idea uh, through that reddish color band there are uh, contacts that I've made on one particular occasion there so that gives you an idea of what that looks like going back to the uh, main monitor here now one area which you've got to be very careful of is this here, which is uh, making sure that there's not too much signal going into the program there, otherwise it will find it difficult to decode. So you've got to keep the volume under control. Uh, and then, of course, the rest of it's all... Um, uh, well, there's an automated section, or there's a section where you can actually do it all manually. I, I won't go into all of this now because there's, as I said before, there's heaps of this already written on the internet, and you can look up and explore this further. And of course, a lot of the guys who are watching this who are already doing FT8 already know that stuff. Now, when I make a contact, I'm using a thing called JT Bridge, which is specifically designed for Mac computers, and uh, it works with a number of different programs. Uh, and so uh, as I make a, uh, a contact, this window, which is the CQs up the top and the non-CQs down below, so it's sort of like this in another form. Uh, but there's also a little a second window there, which is the window uh, where I'm actually make, making a contact. I've made a contact with somebody and that window comes up. And so when a contact may, is made, then a third uh, window comes up to say, go ahead and log the QSO. And then that information is sent to another screen, which is this one here, which is the MacLogger DX program. Now, MacLogger DX is, I think, the the premier program for the Mac. It's got lots of facilities in it, uh, and again, it's a big program. I won't go through it all right now, but there's lots of stuff in here for you to uh, to to look at if you if you've got a Mac computer. This is a program well worth having. And here's a screenshot of the map view of the um, program, which is really quite interesting to see the signal path that's taken to get from uh, one ham radio operator to the next. And so when I make a contact, the JT Bridge program picks it up and sends that information over to the Mac Logger DX program and that instantly fires off information to EQSL to organize uh, QSL cards and it also records it again in a different spot on my qrz.com page. So if you go to my qrz.com page and just put in my uh, call sign VK3BVW you'll be able to uh, see some of the, the most recent contacts that have been made. They don't list them all there. 
this particular logbook I only just started for FT8, so there's not many QSOs in there. doesn't have all the QSOs I made back in the 70s, 80s and 90s. <laughs> so um, it's just uh, one that I use for listing my FT8 contacts. So we'll leave it for that at the moment. I didn't want this to be a long video. So I uh, hope you've got something out of uh, the way we've set up the FT8 here. And, uh, but I really am enjoying it. It's a, it's a great mode and uh, it's uh, got lots of uh, possibilities. And there's uh, lots of learning to be doing as well. So I'm enjoying that as well. It's always good to, uh, to learn something new. I'll be writing a little bit more about this in the August uh, edition of the Spectrum Monitor magazine when it comes out in the shortwave listening column where I'm talking about how FT8 and the Whisper modes are two modes that uh, shortwave listeners might like to explore as well. So that's what that's all about. So watch out for that. And uh, until next time, we'll say 73 and uh, good DXT all.